In the train, everybody was in their own world. There were those who were lying down because they didn't have the energy to sit. There were those who squatted. There were also those who seemed like they were waiting for death because they were severely hungry and none of them looked happy or at ease. Masramat's thoughts turned inward. A body thin and withered that would have separated from my bones were it not for the skin. A face that has changed from being clean to being full of scabs and black from dust. Clothes that are torn beyond all mending. Perhaps no one will recognize me. In 1946, Ahmad Lutfi, a journalist during the Sionan years, wrote Bankai Bernyawa, Living Corpses. It was a novel inspired by Javanese laborers, Ramusha, who were recruited to work all over Japanese conquered territories during World War II. Heaps of Indonesian people who somehow, somehow were brought here by the Japanese. They were forced to come to Singapore. And these people were very, very badly off. Pat would say, Mom, look, Java beggars. That's how they were, Java beggars. They used to be, you know, they used to scrummage in bins, you know, tong sampa, you know, and try and get, get food out of that. They never went home. They came here as recruited workers from the, by the Japanese. And they were all, like, destitute, you know, walking, roaming the streets looking for work. There was no work for them. They were left on the roadside to die. If you cycle along Rocho Canal Road, you see some of them dying on the road, neglected. Japanese didn't care for the sick ones. The Ramusha were forced to build roads, laboured in mines and cleared jungles. They were treated like slaves, kept in camps and given very little. But life outside the camp was no better for them. Some 300,000 Ramusha were sent outside of Java to work. Over three quarters of them perished. We couldn't help them because we couldn't help ourselves. It was very sad. Two years into the Japanese occupation, food supplies dwindled. It was normal to be hungry. As time passed, food was getting less and less, less rice. So, uh, when it came to feeding five children, four children, four children and one baby, there was not enough to go around. There was only enough for one plate of rice. So what did we do? We sat down in front of mother, mama, and she would feed us. Not, not that we didn't know how to eat on our own, but because there was not enough food. So she'd feed us one at a time until the bowl was empty. And when the bowl was empty, we were still hungry because there was not enough to be enough for one person. But because there was not enough, we had to dole out the food to us. So that's how it is. I Chuang 
，结果就是饿死的，根本没得吃的。My two aunts went for a, a type of a bit of a meal, and they went to a hawker stall. I think there were some hawker stalls around. They had this plate of chakwe tiao because there was not enough to buy two plates, so they shared the plate. Now, just as they were going to eat the the, the noodles, suddenly a child came up to them, you know, a child came up to them, and grabbed the plate from them. And ran away. So the, the my aunt wanted to chase the child, you know, and get back the plate. But what did she see? She saw the child sitting on the ground, feeding her small brothers. You know, she even she didn't steal it for herself. She stole it for the brothers. So they didn't they didn't uh, challenge her, or scold her, or try to get back the plate. They just let her eat, share the plate. Many young people found themselves having to work to help feed the family. Teenagers grew up quickly, and some found they would do anything to help put food on the table. I was about 14, 15, 16 years old. I went to work with my own work. I was in my family, I was eating what was called the Guangdong Hua. There was a tree, a tree, a tree, a tree. I was like, you can take a tree, a tree, Ah,你一天做到你做到晚上五点你才回家。啊，吃没有的吃吧。不过工钱几毛钱，没办法。我说要，我就得得。每天就拿着得得，得到有时候头头都，有时候得到手指头都痛，小小，左手妈妈煮
，因為我都細佬過出世嗰陣時有兩間日本士忌嘅，冇冇營養啊，牛奶啲營養又唔好啊，人奶就係冇人奶食，冇人奶食咧就食嗰啲木瓜，日日啲咋，日兩碗嗰啲嘅湯同埋啲飯咋。Today I'm making savoury papaya soup or batik masak tite. This recipe comes to us from Ms. Kathleen Woodford of the Eurasian Association. It's a simple and tasty soup that you don't often see in restaurants nowadays, seasoned with very simple spices. The two main ingredients are seafood, which could be fish, salted fish, shellfish. Today we're going to be using some prawns. And the other ingredient is semi-ripe papaya. First, I slice it in half. And you can see that it's Orange in the middle, but not very ripe. It's still a bit firm. And I'm going to scoop the seeds out. Then I'm just going to take the skin off with a peeler. You want to keep some of the firm, pale flesh so that this prevents the papaya from falling apart during cooking. Do be careful. The papaya can be quite slippery, so just be careful not to cut yourself. So I'm just going to slice these. Now the flavor of this soup will vary depending how ripe the papaya is that you use. If you use very green and unripe papaya, it will be more sour. If you use slightly riper, more yellow skin papaya, the taste will be sweeter and slightly more fruity. There, that's done. Now I'm going to chop and pound some shallots. We're just going to chop them coarsely. It doesn't need to be too fine because you want some texture in the soup. I'm going to pound them. So, of course, this is different from blending or chopping the shallots in a food processor or blender. A metal blade chops things, whereas a pestle and mortar crushes things. So we have about five or six shallots. Next, we're going to rinse some dried shrimp or hebi. Just rinse them in some water to get rid of the dust or debris. And this also helps them to hydrate slightly and soften them before we pound them. Pound them until they fluff up and are broken up. Again, we don't want them to be too fine. We're just pounding them to break them up so they will release the flavor into the soup more easily. And now we have the chilies. Now you can use two chilies, four chilies, six chilies, depending how spicy you want it. I'm just going to use two today, but I'm going to leave all the seeds in. So take off the stems. And then I'm just going to Cut a slit in each chili. If you want less heat, of course, you could remove the seeds. I'm going to leave them in. But putting the slit in the chili allows some of the heat to escape into the soup. So today, for the fresh seafood, we're going to be using some prawns. Make sure that their heads don't flop around when you waggle the prawn. I have just washed them, cut off the legs underneath the head, and trimmed off all the sharp points in the eyes. Of course, leaving the heads on the prawns when you put them in the soup allows for much more release of flavor. Now the stock is simmering, I'm going to crumble in my blachan. And then we're going to add our pounded dried shrimp and our pounded shallots. The stock needs to simmer for a while so the ingredients flavors can mingle. And now we're going to add the sliced papaya and the slit chilies. The amount of time the papaya needs to cook, again, depends on how ripe it is. Stir them in, simmer for a little bit. Then we're going to add the prawns now. And we want to cook the prawns until they're only just cooked through. And the final seasoning, a generous dash of white pepper. And the final garnish, some Asian basil. And of course, basil has a slightly peppery taste, so it perfectly complements the seafood and the papaya. Savory papaya soup, batik masak tite. When food rations ran low and people grew tired of tapioca and sweet potato, the papaya provided some variety to their diets. Ripe papaya was eaten as a fruit. The green papaya was used in soups, curries, pickled, and preserved. 吃英棍要来就还没有到，还是打了嘛。我那个时候我就还还是
看了妈妈这样生病走来走去，我又回去，我又回去那边，我说：“你你现在都没有送东西。”他说：“没办法。”他说：“你你你想办，叫我想办法。”我说：“惨了，没办法。”他说：“你回家了，你回家了。” We were Christians. All my mother did was every night kneel down and pray. For two hours, kneel down with her, and pray for what? Pray for food, pray for good health. Ah, 我在我的头脑说有饭吃饱就算了，吃多少就买多少这样。如果他他们回家有小孩子回来，我就买多一点给他吃。呃，如果我一个人很简很简单，可以饱就算了。我就这样想，我没有浪费。Well, when I was a grass cutter, some of us used to bring food along, and not wait for the Japanese to give you the. And then we used to share, share things occasionally, you know, a bowl, a plate of or a bunkus or nasi lama would be it would be a tremendous luxury. So sometimes we used to share with one another things like that. If you are in a situation where it is very brotherly. It's very intimate, where, where people know one another. I think it's easy to, easy to share. It, it is easy to find a way. Hunger brought out the worst and best in people. Many were driven to extreme measures to fill an empty stomach. For those who shared the trauma of hunger and managed to get by. Their experience inspired acts of kindness that renewed people's faith in goodness and humanity. Unfortunately, for people like the Ramusha and ordinary folk who succumbed to a slow death by starvation, their suffering was as bad, if not worse, than the thousands of violent deaths that occurred during this dark period of Singapore's history. Thank、you